mindset is the first core. To me, if you don't have your mindset going, you can't really rock and roll and fire on all cylinders in your other course. You can't start developing those habits because you've got a negative mindset. Your perception on the world is skewed. So I love that you guys talked about mindset. Let's get into that. Why don't you tell us about your book and what you're doing? Yeah, so the book is Transformation, uh, Change Your Mindset, Change Your Energy, Change Your Life. Um, a lot of people's behavior patterns, habits is, is rooted in their, in their mindset and their psychology and their mentality. So to be successful, to have greatness, to have gratitude, to feel good is a mindset. So when we talk about fixed mindset versus growth mindset, fixed mindset, they look for validation all the time. They look for people to tell them they're good enough. They look like, how does my jumper look? How does my shoes look? Like they're always searching for validation, right? The growth mindset is always looking for feedback. How do I get better? How does this how does this help me improve? So if we talk about relationships and we put both of those mindsets in a relationship. Say you have a bad breakup, right? The fixed mindset person probably will want revenge. I'm going to get them back. I'm going to, you know, the growth mindset is like, you know what? I made some mistakes. I failed. I learned these lessons. I'm going to take that and I'm going to benefit from it and I'm going to become better. So fix is just more than like validation and, you know, trying to get even. And the growth is more about feedback and looking at things to make them better. And a lot of times we can have a fixed mindset around asking for help. You know, it's like we don't, we don't want to ask for help because we don't want people to see that we're not good enough. So we won't, you know what I'm saying? So, yes. we, so that's the mindset part. Um, so we have four phases. The first phase is mindset. The second phase is attitude. The third phase is confidence and clarity. And the fourth phase is execution. So in these four phases, we give you daily routines and exercises to do each day for 28 days for an entire month to reclaim your power, to change your life. But it starts with your mindset and understanding where your thoughts, your emotions, and all these things come from. So we're not giving people the answers. We're asking you questions so you can get your own answers. So if I say, well, how do you feel today? Do you love yourself? That's a question that's in the book. You have to answer that. I can't say you love yourself because I don't know you. So we're allowing people to get back into who they really are and not who they think they are. So most times in life, we have this thing that, sorry for the, <laughs> the train. Oh, tell uh, me. Happens a lot. You may hear a screaming kid here in about five It's all good. It's beautiful, priceless. That we, we, are, we become the identity of our profession. So if you ask 90% of the people, who are you? They're going to say, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm a trainer, I'm a reality star, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a wife right? So take the job away. Who are you? If you lose a kid, who are you? If you get divorced, who are you? And so that's what happens is we got to shed all those identities that we create based on our profession and career and see who we are at the core. Like when things don't go your way, who are you? How do you feel? How do you move forward? How do you deal with adversity? How do you deal with life? So a lot of times we're on autopilot, like you said, when we first came on, we just going off of based on what we're programmed to do and conditioned to do. So right. sometimes we got to reprogram and unwire the old habits, the failure habits, to develop some new success habits. So just to take your words out of your book and your portion, that's basically what transformation the book, the workbook is about, is getting people to develop new habits, success habits, healthy habits, to change their energy, to change their mindset, to change their life, to shift their paradigm and they can become better and do more in life. Well said, my man. So <laughs> I love that. I love how you put that. Um, and, and it's kind of like I opened up at the beginning of when we started talking about, which is there's a lot of different, you know, as to methods, methods, there's a lot, there's many millions, but you know, principles are few. And what you're saying and what I'm saying are literally the exact same thing. It's the principle of you got to get your mind right. You got to know what to take action on. You got to get those principles that are universal that have been around since the beginning of time and are going to be around till the end. Stop taking action on what you saw on Facebook yesterday or that guy that says for nine ninety nine I can 
fix your life, you know, and, and this day and age in this instant generation, it's really hard. I mean, there's so many things coming at us and news and then the media and then our phones, you know, they, they see what we like and then they show us only more of it, which polarizes. <laughs> yeah, more. distractions. Social yeah. media and all these things. So, right, it's figuring out, okay, what's actually going to make me happy? Like, wh and, and, wh and then taking action on those things and then building that momentum. And then it's like every step of the way, you start to build a little bit of confidence. Your perception starts to shift a little bit. And like you said, like we we're both saying, it's like you, that, that broken, that whatever that, that mindset you might have grown, grown into at this point. And you used the word reprogramming. I, I heard something recently, um, this term, and I love it. And you can use it too. It's called reparenting. And hey, that there says we go. It all. It's sort of like, that's what it's about. It's like you may have been parented in the wrong way by the world. And let's let let's reparent you. Let's let's reparent that brain, and let's just pretend you're you know two year uh, uh, just fresh and frisky coming into the world, and let's let's put the right stuff in your brain. And it's not easy, as you yes, know. Yes, you know, it's not easy. In life is, and that's that's the problem. Is again, you know, this is a generation people want to just snap their fingers and get it right now, and if they can't, they move on to the next thing. That's that low hanging fruit that's easy to grab and, and fun and hits that dopamine. But you've got to be able to in order to change your life, you know, you got to start with the mindset, but then you got to be able, and part of your mindset is being able to make a commitment and stick to it and have that discipline and being like, I know that I can get there no matter what obstacles are temporary roadblocks. I'm an owner of my life, like you said, not a victim. And no matter what, I'm going to be able to push through, but I got to keep doing this until it becomes a habit because this, this old habit I have ain't, ain't doing anything for me. Yes. It's making me miserable. Right? Yeah. And 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 thing is, is that the work is tedious, right? You know, writing affirm, doing your affirmations, writing gratitude statements, meditation, cold showers, prayer. Like we have all these things in this book, but the hardest work a person will do in life is on themselves. That's the hardest job you will have is working on yourself. Because if you can work on yourself and you can master yourself, you can eventually master the life you want to have because you understand every little neons and little thing about yourself that makes you you even if it's uncomfortable even a shadow self there's a uh there's a new book out you know outside of i have a book but i like to, i read a lot um that's uh, a robert green yeah i read a lot a read a lot yeah i read a lot so there's a book i'm, I'm on an audio book on audible it's uh the laws of human nature by robert green robert green wrote 48 laws of power Mastery, the 50th law, and a lot of amazing books, the art of seduction, like a lot of books. So he said the shadow self is the self we ignore, we repress, because we don't want to acknowledge it, because we think people are not going to accept us. So when these big time celebrities or people we look up to get in trouble for things of miscontact, whatever it is that's bad, it's because the shadow self has been repressed for so long, we haven't acknowledged it and uh, brought it to surface that it comes to surface when we don't want it, when it's uncomfortable. And so then that person says, oh, that was not me. I was this is not who I am. It's like, no, that is you. That's a part of you. You just have been denying it and it got the best of you. So showing people that it's okay sometimes not to be okay. It's okay sometimes that she might have a liking to something that might be abnormal to others, but you have to acknowledge that. You have to put it in its place. You have to understand it you have to be aware but if you don't have the information on self you don't you're not in control of yourself those emotions are that shadow self the subconscious is so giving people the tools because i want people to have their power to take their power back we have put so much power into the government into the system and the system fails you you feel like a failure because you gave your power away right. you know you get to choose how you feel and what you do and, and what happens in your life but what I've learned in my time, people want change, but they, they are afraid of change because it's indifferent and it's uncomfortable. So they rather just play the comfortable place because it's normal. It's, it's everybody's here. It's like, yay. No one wants to be outstanding and stand out because it's like, ah, I don't like that. And you have to be responsible. You have to be accountable. Like I have to show up every day. I have an interview now, I have an interview an hour from now. I have another interview after that. I have to show up. So what do I have to do? I have to prepare myself mentally, emotionally, energetically. 
Is it easy? Not always. Is it fun? Yes. Is it challenging sometimes? Of course. But I'm willing to do the work to get what I want in life. So I show up. And that's half the battle is showing up. People think you have to be human doing. You have to be human being. So if I say I'm a professional basketball player and people don't believe me because I haven't done it, it's because I'm believing because I haven't done it that I'm not it. But if I believe I meant me for doing it, when I do it, I'll be it. If that makes sense, I don't know if I'm clicking on all cylinders. But basically, I'm saying you're manifesting, you're speaking, and you're reaping. What you speak, you reap. But a lot of times, we, we doubt ourselves, and we create these false narratives about an opportunity before it happens. Mm -hmm. So we cancel ourselves out. So we want to unpack, unpack all those things and try to say, why am I thinking those thoughts? Why am I afraid? Who told me I couldn't do this? Why do I have to believe this philosophy? I also read a quote that says, in America, we like to hold on to the philosophy that you got to struggle, you have to grind, you have to work hard to be successful. That's not, that's not all true. You don't have to work hard to be successful. You don't have to struggle to be great. But that's the ideology that they have put on people. They're like, oh, you, you're strong. It's like, not knocking that. You can work smart and you can work efficient. I used to spend two hours in the gym. All I need is 45 minutes. And I get better results because it's efficient. It's quality. So...